Hi, this is Jean Jacques Taylor, and you're listening to Jot Talk. This is a podcast where I talk about the Cowboys, the team I've covered as a beat writer, columnist, TV insider, and radio host for 28 years. I'll also talk about the NFL and the things I love working out, streaming, food, and all things down. Welcome to Jock Talk, where sports is fluid. What's true today might not be true an hour, a day, or a month from now. I'm going to give you the truth straight, no chaser. Glad to have you aboard. Let's get it. Welcome to episode 79 of Jock Talk. I'm Jean Jacques Taylor, joined by my boy Big Joe and the Big Rig. What up, player? What up, what up? 79, who comes to mind? Uh, Harvey Martin and Eric Williams. You did not mention the great Ryan Petiti. <laughs> Six round pick of your Dallas Cowboys in 2005, who somehow managed to start 16 games in Dallas and made one other start in his other three years in the league. Take that. For what it's worth. That's probably why the Cowboys finished 6-10 and 10 that year. But hey, who am I? Oh, I don't know. I take that back. That might have been a the year they were pretty good, 2005. Anyway, here's the deal. We have an abbreviate. Oh, before I get into that, let me tell you about this. Uh, if you're ever involved in an accident and it's not your fault, what you need to do, what you got to do, what you must do, pick up the phone, call 972-934-8900. And simply say, hey, here's my situation. What do you think? That's good friends at Greening Law. And I'm here to tell you, if they bring you on as a client, it's been your lucky day. And here's why. They handle everything. Did I? Did you hear me? Everything. Why? They want you focused on two things. Healing and renewal. Get your mind right. Get your life right. Get your, get your mind right. Get your body right. Get your life back. It's really that simple. That's what they want you focused on. And to make sure that happens... You need a doctor's appointment? Check this out. They take care of that. You need to see a specialist? Check this out. They take care of that too. They do all those things so that you can focus on what? Healing and renewal. Get your mind back. Get your body back. Get your life back. See? It's really that simple. Uh, But that's Greening Law. Give them a call. If somebody else is negligence, be it in a car accident, a trucking accident, you got hurt at a business, uh, medical malpractice, any of that. If that has happened to you, somebody else's negligence has caused you some harm, call Grinning Law, 972-934-8900. Let them go to work for you. Let them walk you through what can be a long, intimidating, uh, you know, scary process sometimes. Um, they ask, listen to this, they will ask and answer questions that you didn't know that was supposed to be inquired about. That's what they do. Grinning Law, 972-934-8900. 8900 is the number. If you've been involved in an accident and somebody else's negligence has caused you some harm. Now, check this out. We got an abbreviated edition of Jock Talk today. And here's why. Sometimes things happen. So we had a great conversation with Clarence E. Hill Jr. today. The E stands for every day, every now and then, a guy like Clarence can win a national award for his beat writing prowess. How about that? Uh, he was uh, awarded by the Associated Press an award for uh, breaking news on his uh, Zeke Elliott story last year when Zeke got cut. And uh, he owned that thing for hours in an, in an era where most of the time, if you can own it for five minutes, you've had a great day. And he owned it for hours. Now, we would send you that. We would let you hear that whole conversation. But we had some technical difficulties caused by a power outage that we didn't realize. So check this out. This is what it reminded me of because... Big Joe and the Big Rig, if you can't tell, he's somewhere between mad and pissed off and uh, apologetic. And I was like, dog, sometimes you just got to charge to the game. Um, here's what happened, because I was kind of laughing about it, because here's what happened probably, uh, you know what, I think this happened whatever the year Michael Irvin went to the Hall of Fame. Uh, when did Michael Irvin go to the Hall of Fame? Uh, I don't know, we'll look it up. But whenever he went to the Hall of Fame, the Dallas Morning News sent me to Fort Lauderdale to do a piece on Michael. And this is right when the industry was starting to change. They also sent a videographer, because here's what happened. They wanted me to do a big piece on Mike, and then they wanted a videographer to do a piece to accompany it to put on the Internet. And so I went to Fort Lauderdale, talked to Randy Shannon, former cowboy who was then the coach at the U. Talked to the mayor of Fort Lauderdale. Talked to a couple of Mike's, you know, went over to St. Thomas Aquinas. Talked to George Smith, legendary high school coach, Mike's coach. Talked to him. Um, Talked to a couple of Mike's friends. We spent the day 
doing that thing. We got back to the hotel. She's the woman I was who accompanied me and said, hey, I'm going to go look at the tape and then let's go grab some lunch or some dinner and figure out how, uh, how your story is going to go. And then I can break down the tape and go, oh, by the way, we stopped at Pearl Irvin's house. That's Mike's mom. We talked to her, too. Man, I had been in my room. So, you know, we get in the elevator. She gets off of her floor. I get off at of mine. I had been in my room for about three minutes. Phone rang. I'm like, who is this calling me? I pick it up. Shock. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm like, what's up? The button was not recording on the interviews. I said, which one? She said, all of them. I said, girl, stop. She said, no, I'm dead serious. I said, you didn't get none of those interviews on the air? I mean, recorded? She's like, no, this is a new camera, and you got to push this button and that button to activate record. And I had the old camera, and I only had to push that, the first button, not the second one. I said, wow. She said, I said, we had none of them. She said, no, none of them. I was like, well, we ain't got them, we ain't got them. <laughs> I said, all we can do is go back tomorrow and see if we can uh, get these people again and tell them what happened. They say, we had a camera malfunction, we got to come back. We ain't the only person that's ever happened to. So that's why we got an abbreviated podcast today. We had a great conversation with Clarence. Trust me, it was fantastic. Got full-fledged belly laughs from Joe. Just because I told Clarence I was getting my summer body right when we talked last night, and he thought that's not a thing men should say amongst each other. And when he thought about that, I didn't mention this to him, but I'm going to ask Joe this. I was out with a few, with, it was four of us. I hooked up with a couple of guys I knew from high school and another dude I know for a long time, like 20, 30 years. Uh, impromptu last week, we, we met at this other event. And we said, hey, as that event was in, and we're like, hey, let's go grab a drink. So we went out and had a drink. And uh, those guys split a cheeseburger. And I said, I don't, I said, I think you can split a cheeseburger if you're out with a woman. I said, I don't know if you can split a cheeseburger if you're out with another dude. And we had a big belly laugh and conversation about that. So, can me and you split a cheeseburger, dog? Nah, me and you can't. Oh, I mean, you got somebody else you can split a cheeseburger with? Another no, I don't man? know. I don't know. But you're going to say something. You gonna say something zesty about us splitting the cheeseburger? So I don't know. You damn right, cause when the, when the food came, I had you know the dude, the, the waitress brought me my burger. My boy Wink got his burger, and before she could put, it, I said, "That's their burger. Have you got an extra plate for them?" Oh. <laughs> well, you they know, they both it, looked at me and said, "You mother." <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I said, were. "Come on, boys." I said, "I'm as metrosexual as, as anybody. I got shea butter at the crib." Yeah. I mean, it's all good amongst friends. That that you know what? That's uh, you can split it. I don't know. I mean, well, yeah, really, it was. Know, they didn't want a whole burger because they were big burgers. They like, you know, we can split this thing, and that's probably just enough for me because I'm not gonna eat a whole burger. Uh, but it was just the fact that they were talking about splitting it. Uh, that just had me rolling. Uh, yeah, that's why I say I probably could split it with somebody <laughs> else. I wouldn't. I wouldn't split it with you because you're gonna you're gonna make it something else. But yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm liable. To, I'm I'm a big eater, so I'm gonna probably either try to finish that thing if you say I can't, or I'm gonna take half of it home. All right. Well, I, let's uh, on, that, on that note, let's uh, let's dip into the block because a couple things going on, and then we'll talk about Tony Pollard, and then uh, we'll, we'll get out of here today. All right. I was thinking about this the other day, man, because Dak Prescott, uh, his girlfriend, Sarah Jane, I believe is her name, their baby arrived. The baby's named MJ, or that's what they're calling her. And uh, he was talking about, you know, she's only been here a few days, but my life has changed already. Uh, I'm trying to pass off these diaper changing duties. But it's kind of wild when you wake up, you look over there in the crib and you're responsible for another person. For the first time And he said It's just It's just a different life And that got me to thinking <clears throat> That uh, Just how much You know I try to explain this To uh, different people When they have Kids Especially if they're young people But just how You know When you have You just know you, There's no love Like the love of your kid Because that's probably The first person That you love unconditionally uh, 
you know, and, and it's just a wild thing. And I have uh, such a good time with mine. And um, it just it just brought back a lot of memories about my kids. And I was uh, when when uh, my son was born, I told my my wife, I was like, hey, I know how you roll. You know how I roll. So any feedings, I got them after midnight, you know. Uh, you take them before then or, you know, after two in the morning, I got you because I'm going a, I'm to a be up kind of early anyway. I'm a light sleeper, so don't worry about it. I got that. And uh, I find that time to be enjoyable, man. Not very often did I mind hearing the baby cry at three o'clock in the morning and get up, and go get the bottle ready and feed him. I find that to be our little bonding time and I enjoyed it. Uh, how did fatherhood change you? Um, fatherhood changed me. I was a soldier when I became a father, and I thought I'd do 20 years. Right. Once, when I was deployed, um, and I left my wife behind, I really didn't understand why everybody was so sad about us getting deployed. I was, hey, my wife, I'm leaving my wife too. Once we start, once we had my oldest son, I understood why everybody was missing their family. I missed my wife to a certain degree. But I missed a lot of things. I was off the first 30 days my son was born, and then I didn't see him like 90 days after that. Mm. So it was one of them things where, yeah, I missed him, and it made me realize that the service was not long for me. So that didn't want to be going that long? Nah, not at all. It's just one of them things where um, I was in a, in a in the National Training Center. To make a long story short, I was in the National Training Center where we where we uh, learned to fight Russians and do simulated war training. And um, I couldn't get mail because somebody killed a mail truck. They blew up the mail truck. By the time I got mail, it was pictures of my sons in the in my 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 son in there. And in those pictures, everybody was holding him. You know what I'm saying? He was showing. I, right. I just noticed the theme. Here's my cousin holding him. Here's my mom holding him. Here's my my wife holding him, and then, and I couldn't hold him after right, right. being with him for 30 days. I have a picture of me and him in a rocking chair, and he's just tiny, and so that kind of broke my heart. And right there, I knew I wasn't going to be in the service that long. So that's Thank how much that. it changed me. I uh. I have some of my fondest memories of, of my dude when he was two or three, one or two. Because uh, I'm thinking about it right now. There's a picture I had. I think it's in an old camera. That's why I can't get access to it. Uh, but he was in the crib because well, we always had him in the crib, even if even if he was at the foot of the bed before we moved him into his own room when he was young. And there's a picture of him, man, holding holding the bars like he in jail. Tears with a big old snot bubble coming out. And all I could think of was, hey, dog, I don't care how much you put up. You're not finna get out of that prison cell right now. <laughs> no, we not. you can't come yeah. to bed with me, dog. We're yeah. not finna start that. I let you I let you in the room. That's all you get. And I don't care what you look like, how much you fuss, how much you cry. But just go on, sit there, and just look sad, man. Because daddy, daddy got love for you. But mm-mm, you can't get over here, man, because I, I don't want you interrupting my happy time. Whenever it may happen, it's not guaranteed, but whenever yeah. it's happened, yeah. you're not gonna be in between me and happy time. So you oh, know you got yeah, you gotta share. <laughs> you gotta share a time. Yeah, they they gon they gon they little time they they steal time. They little time stealers for sure. Yeah, yeah. man. So yeah. Uh, it's it's funny, but well, one of the fathers, one ahead. of the ways it changed me also was um when you when you when you when you a man and you tough or whatever, you're not vulnerable. To people, you know what I'm saying. It made right. me more vulnerable because I cared about how you treated my kids. Right, right. You know, you can affect me by how you treat my kids, whether it's gonna make me feel better about you or make me want to kick your ass. You right. know, my daughter used to have a saying. She used to say, "You know, kids say the damnedest thing." She said, "Daddy, why right. do you always walk around like people owe you money?" <laughs> I said, "Well, you know, I have a definitely have a resting bitch face, as they say." Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I want to make let people know that we're not to be messed with. I love these kids. You're going to do something to these kids. I'm going to do something to you. So it was more of a, hey, you know what? Leave, uh, you know, leave us alone. Right, right. If you want to start some shit, leave us alone. If you know me, you know it's just my resting bitch face. If you don't, you just know, let me leave him alone. He don't look right. 
Right, right, right. So it was kind of more of a protection thing. But that's what she's always say. She still says sometimes, why you always uh, uh, walk around like people owe you money or look at people <laughs> like they owe you money? I thought that was pretty good. Um, I uh, I tell people, especially first time fathers, if or first time parents, um, that you know it's the best shit you'll ever do. Uh, you know, you get to shape somebody, mold somebody, hope that they follow your instructions and directions, but understand that if they don't, you know, you you just a you a lifetime coach. You you can't play the game. For them. You can all you can do is coach them, and uh, you know I, I find that to be very enjoyable. And uh, I love watching my uh, watching my dude become a man now, and the decisions, the good ones and the bad ones, and you know watching him work through all that. Uh, my granddaughter's like my daughter because she's only two years younger than my son, and my daughter was 17 when she had it, so I kind of raised her. And so all of that, you know, trying to trying to understand the difference between girls and boys and all of that. But uh, I enjoy the whole fatherhood process, and because my parents got divorced when I was six. And we spent every summer with my dad, literally every summer from the from the day after school was out until the weekend before school started. We were in Columbus, Ohio, or Cincinnati, Ohio, where he was living. Um, so I've really enjoyed hanging with my kids and uh, spending doing all that stuff with them that my dad never got to do with me, whether it was playing catch in the backyard or hanging out at the park. Or, uh, you know, I established this whole, I think I told y'all about this one time, I created Father and Son Appreciation Day. And what it was, was we would do it probably every March, I mean every February. Just pick a day, random day, Tuesday or Wednesday usually. And I would take him to school and i go to each of his teachers and i say, hey, uh, let me know what homework he has, if he has any, because today is Father Son Appreciation Day. And they were like, what is that? I said, oh, we just finna kick it all day. <laughs> As soon as we pick up this homework, we finna go play basketball, or we go into the park, and then we go catch a movie, and then we go into lunch, and we just hanging, me and him, all day together. We ain't talking to the mama none today. It's just me and him. We are kicking it all day. And you would be shocked, man. The teacher's like, oh my God, I wish more parents would do that with their kids. And uh, dog, when I tell you we did that probably every day from probably, every year from probably the second grade, to probably the seventh grade because then you know hey, he wasn't quite as cool he had stuff to do he's playing football and that but up until then man once a year and he started looking forward to it hey dad when is father son appreciation day and uh, every now and then when it pop up on my memories on my phone I'll send him the pictures and be like hey remember this one and every time it's like yeah we had a blast and so to me that's kind of what fatherhood's all about and so I was thinking about that and how he'll get a chance to appreciate all of that and uh, enjoy it. Hope that he really gets a chance to enjoy it because uh, that parenting thing, man, is some of the best stuff we'll ever do. Oh, he going to enjoy it. Uh, uh, he got a daughter, too? Yep. Oh, yeah, he going to enjoy it. And, and he going to remember all the stuff he did. And he going to be like, no, nah, you ain't doing that with my daughter. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you understand? Nah, there's so many dudes like that, man. Uh, I've been tripping on it, really. Uh, I said, why are you giving that boy a hard time, man? Just because you was that way. Uh, you know, but it is what it is. It's funny, though. Uh, I got another topic for you. I just read this the other day. And I was curious to what you think because I know you like Amazon Prime. Uh, Target, man, is coming out with their version of Amazon Prime. If you join the Target Club... Then you can have uh, free shipping uh, if you got a, if you join the Target Club or you uh, get their credit cards. You can have free shipping uh, for forty nine dollars and ninety nine dollars a year, depending on uh, uh, which pro platform you get on. I don't think they have any chance to steal any customers from Amazon, just because Amazon literally just like the name from A to Z, you could get anything, whereas Target. It's a, it's you know it's not nearly that wide a range of items. What do you think? Can yeah. Target? Yeah, I was thinking. I was I was when, as you were saying that I was thinking. Are you just shopping in Target? Or are you just shopping worldwide? Surely they gonna broaden the uh, the uh, um, selection of what you can buy if they're trying to compete with Amazon. Just the free shipping is not gonna do that. I mean, they already kind of do that, so it's got to be 
uh, uh, they got to be more of a uh, Amazon um, business model where they got uh, other um, distributors that they go through. Because you got right. Amazon has Amazon distributors and they got people that are outside Amazon. So, right. you know, yeah. It's, uh, it's called, what it's called is uh, Circle 360 with free, unlimited, same day delivery. Um, now it says uh, free, unlimited, same day delivery. Now, see, that seems like that have, that may have uh, caught your caught your attention. They're gonna offer three uh, different membership tiers, one of which is not free but offers additional benefits. The Target Circle, which is a free membership, um, members will receive automatic deals applied to check out personal sales and partner perks like free trials. The Circle Card, previously known as the Tiger Target Red Card. Offers uh, extra 5% off purchases, 30 days to return items, mm. free two-day shipping. Um, it comes at a discounted price. Uh, now, I had the red card like a decade ago, and then they had one of those breaches where everybody got your information. And I was like, nah, I'm good uh, when they tried to get me back. Uh, I still, I, But I am a Target shopper, but I was like, nah, 5% ain't enough for me to give you this information no more. And then Circle 360 is going to be uh, subscribers get free same day delivery and its retail partners. That's probably what you're talking about. Who are your retail partners on uh, orders of $35 or more with delivery speeds as fast as one hour? Uh, it's $99 per year. Uh, you can get it right now through uh, April 7th uh, for $49 a year. So that's $50 off this first year membership. So, does any of that intrigue you? Make you more likely to do it? Yeah, it's intriguing in a lot of ways for me because I think about the uh, the uh, logistics and stuff since I was in that business. That's a lot of trucks. That's a right. lot of warehouses. That's a lot of work for people. You know, that's a lot of employment right there. I look at it like that because um, one hour... You know how much stuff you got to have on hand and how many business partners you have? Out here where I live off of 35 and 20 in the in the Fort Worth, South Fort Worth, uh, it's, it's a couple of Amazon houses that popped up, a warehouse that popped up because yeah. of the way, the way the way Amazon keeps stuff on hand and delivers stuff in an hour and a lot of the shipping that they do. And that's a lot of employment. So uh, on that note, that's pretty good for the economy, I guess. Yeah. Um, pretty interesting. You know, because now you're gonna see Target vans everywhere. Uh, this is true. I so, think the uh, I think the next step is uh, you're gonna get drones to be delivering stuff, which really will allow you to get it even faster. Like you'll be able to order something from Walgreens or something. You'll put that thing on a drone, and it'll be at your crib in 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we talk about drones. I can talk about drones all day. Mm -hmm. um, the airspace. The airspace below, I think, 450 feet is going to be crowded if they do that. Yeah. You know, that's crazy because you can only fly so high with a drone mm. as far as airspace is concerned. Yeah, oh, it'll yeah. be. Yeah, I wonder how that'll go. Yeah, yeah, how, do you, said, how do you control that traffic? Oh, there'll be a way. But that's a, that's a good conversation for another day because we need to get into your drones. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, because you are a drone expert. I'm not like an expert. Drone. I'm yeah, a, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't say expert because boy, you, I get to talking to most, somebody or hit us on Twitter and go crazy. Well, okay, you yeah. know a lot about drones. Yeah, I know a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll say that for another day soon. Um, uh, but uh, that's our trip around the block this week. And now let's talk about a guy who said something interesting yesterday that caught my attention. That would be one Tony Pollard. Now I, I read this, and so I don't know if he said it or not. But I think the person, and I, I read so much that, forgive me, I can't remember who wrote this. But what I remembered is it was from a reputable source. That's why I paid attention to it. It might have been Michael Gelkin from the Dallas Morning News who said, basically, and I'm paraphrasing here, Tony Pollard is not opposed to returning to Dallas, even if the money elsewhere is slightly better. And I find that to be interesting. Now, let me tell you why he might have that approach. He might have that approach because, number one, check this out, dog. 
he likes playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Number two, he and his family like living in Dallas. Uh, even though he's a young guy, he likes living in Dallas. He likes playing for the Cowboys. And I think this is a real deal. I could be wrong, but I think this is a real deal. He got $10 million last year. His money is good. He's going to get a deal this year that pays him somewhere between probably, let's say, 3 and $6 million a year on average. Somewhere between there. Um, and so I think he's like, you know, unless you're just going to blow me away with the money, the cost of living in Dallas is fine. There's no state income tax here. I like the team. The team likes me. They know how to use me now, blah, blah, blah. I can have success here. I might be able to make money off the field here because people start to really associate me with the Cowboys and I get some opportunities here. And so unless you just blow me away with the money, I might be cool staying here. Um, and, you know, I, um, I think Tony Pollard is a really good player. And I think his ability to break those long runs and have those big plays, even though he didn't have them really that much last year, is something that's unusual in the league. And that if you have a guy who's capable of that, you should, uh, you know, you should try to keep him because that's a skill that, that not a lot of people have in today's NFL. What do you think? Yeah, I think Tony, he, you know, he, this is the last year he was recovering from, uh, from an injury too. And right. He didn't get his – he wasn't all the way back throughout the whole year. But what I liked is that he adapted his running style to what they needed him to do. You know, instead of the big runs that he wasn't getting for whatever reason, he started running right. hard. He started running hard. He started hitting the hole. He started just slashing through stuff. And so mm -hmm. we had never seen him do that before. So maybe he added that to his bag of tricks. On the day I got to grind, I'm going to grind. On the day I can be explosive, I can be explosive. On some days I can do both. Right. But I think, yeah. Yeah, I and, think him uh, being familiar is a good thing. And here's the deal with Pollard. Um, he's about to turn 27 in April. We know 28 is the year that running backs typically fall off a cliff. And so if I know this, and he knows this, and teams know this, they're not going to sign you to no long-term deal. Mm -hmm. Like two years is probably the longest deal you're going to get because they're thinking it's two, and if it's just one, we good. And so, again, the familiarity with Dallas and coaching staff McCarthy and all this other stuff might lend you to just say, you know what, I'm good here. Uh, and unless you're going to blow me away with the money, I'm open to staying here. Well, he, proved he, he proved he could be durable and, and be physical last year. Two things that I didn't think he could do. Yeah. You know, that was the uh, thing. He was always, you know, he's always hurt. He don't have a lot of mileage because either he was hurt or he was playing. I don't think he has the mileage. Like you say, you're right, they drop off, but – I'm not thinking Tony going to drop off because he don't have that much mileage on him. He's been part-time, and he's been right. hurt in the past. Well, check this out. In his first five years, how many carries do you think Tony Pollard has? 250. Two, his first five years, how many does he carries? How many carries have he had? Yeah. Maybe 600. That's not bad. 752. Okay. In uh, his first five years, how many carries you think Zeke Elliott had? Oh, about 930. 14, 13. Yeah, okay. Twice as many. Yeah. So, so if Tony you just look at it like that. 150 carries a year. Pretty much. About, yeah. Pretty much. Um, and just, just so you know, Tony Pollard's. Um, oh, that's Tyron Smith, not Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard's uh, yearly carries. 86, 101, 130, 193, 252. He'd probably mm -hmm. be back to 190, 180 this year. Um, and, you know, depending on what kind of back they get to pair with him, if he were to return, it could be even closer to 130, 140, where we're really using you to just light it up when you get a shot. Um, and, you know, I, I did a little, some little quick research. Uh, this year, last year was not as bad as some people think, but it only looked like that because we were comparing it to the year before when there was five yards a carry. Right. And uh, in 2022, splitting time with Zeke, he had 300 yard games, 
22 runs of 10 yards or more, nine runs of 20 yards or more, and only 193 carries, which is very impressive. The last year, he had 15 runs of 10 yards or more, six runs of 20 yards or more, but he had 50 more carries. And he averaged four yards a carry. And that's why it seems so off, off kilter. But, you know, uh, I think some of that was him coming back from the leg. Some of that was they didn't use nearly as much outside zone, which he really seemed to excel in last year. Yep. Um, you know, and so all those things have to take into consideration when you figure if Tony Pollard's coming back. But I would be somebody who would love to have Tony Pollard back in the right role. This is not me being sentimental. This is me saying – don't forget, there's not very many dudes who score touchdowns from long distance like Tony Pollard. And if you have that in the league, you need to take advantage of it and keep that dude. He scored more touchdowns in his career from 20 yards than he has from uh, less than 20 yards. Or from uh, more than 10 yards and less than 10 yards. That's incredible. Now, compare that with somebody with Zeke, who was a really great goal line runner. Most of his touchdowns the last few years have been one, two, three, four yards. Tony is 10 yards or more almost all the time, dog. That's impressive. Almost two to one touchdowns above 10 yards and below 10 yards, which is crazy. Uh, But that's Tony Pollard. He's a game breaker. He's been a game breaker. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see him back. But he's got to be at the right price, baby. And if it is, you know, I uh, I think we'll see him again. Hopefully. I like it. Uh, that's still to be determined, though. But uh, Tony Pollard says he'll take less money to hang out in Dallas uh, as long as things are comparable. Um, so, and with that, uh, we want to make sure we tell you. I told you we had an abbreviated session today. We always appreciate Greening Law. Uh, we can't do it without them. So, Robert Greening and the Green Team, give them a call, 972-934-8900. If you're involved in an accident and you've been injured and it's not your fault, my boys at Smokey Johns, Juan and Brent Reeves. Uh, Smokey Johns, that jam session bowl, real talk. It's to live for. Wing Wednesday. Yes, I said it. Wing Wednesday. It's fantastic. Smoke wings and Smokey Johns, delicious. And uh, until we chat again, for Big Join the Big Rig, you guys be blessed. Mm-hmm.